ever seen. This is Relationship Marketing Plan for Alexis and Value. My name is Ruslana. Here is Veronica, Anthony, and Mark. <laughs> So let's talk about background and products. We are an automotive leader in Bellevue area. Lexus company was opened in 2007. We are the second largest Lexus dealership in the country by the building size. We offer a wide selection of vehicles, both new and used, and we are certified by Lexus service department. Okay. Our customer persona is Robert who lives in Bellevue. He's 60 years old, owns his own dentistry practice, has high standards and expectations. He expects exceptional service and his kids have left the nest. For his customer segmentation, middle to upper class individuals, urban professionals with high statues, males and females, middle aged, and they live in Bellevue, Seattle, and Snohomish. All right guys, let's dive into the customer journey. So our customer starts out with, they're sitting in their car, they hear some weird noise or just something is going on with their SUV. So they're like, okay, let's Google serve Lexus service places because I need to get this fixed before I go on my road trip. And so they put that into Google and oh, look what pops up, Lexus of Bellevue. Okay, so they check the Google reviews, seems pretty good. And so we move on to the next stage of our customer journey, the next touch point. So we are going to call Lexus and make an appointment. And let's say that there are no convenient times. Well, that might be the end of your journey. But if you find a good appointment time, you just go on right ahead and then we start to make the drive to the dealership. And we show up, giant dealership, beautiful service drive and you park your car and you're hoping that the valet will come out and you know answer your questions get your keys and hopefully they're quick and friendly um, if they're not and they ignore you and you're sitting there for a while you may not want to come back so you hop out of your car and you come speak to a service advisor and he'll give you a price quote and maybe that's too expensive for you in that case maybe your journey ends there but if it's reasonable and clear and you kind of understand why that price is quoted as it is, you'll head on to the service waiting area. Here you'll sit down, make yourself comfy, see if maybe they have coffee, some you know, snacks, it's all clean, and you have something to entertain yourself with because if you find it kind of boring, you probably won't be back either. It looks like your car's finished. You go and talk to your service advisor one last time he goes through and explains what's been done on your vehicle and what future recommendations um, could possibly come up for your next service. Now, if he doesn't explain that and if you don't understand why you were, um, why the price is so high, you might not want to come back because you don't understand why you paid all this money for something you thought that was simple. So that is that kind of uh, fork in the road for that touch point there. So the last touch point you have is actually getting into your car. Um, if it's washed and vacuumed and the problem's gone, then that's great. Roger, our good friend Roger, will probably be coming back again. So you move on to your last touch point, getting into your car, and hopefully the issue that you came to the dealership with is gone and it's washed and your car is vacuumed and that means our good friend Robert will likely be coming back. However, if the issue is still present and it's unwashed, uh, you might not come back again. For market trends, early 2020 global car sales were expected to drop with the growing coronavirus. Auto industry analysts are now concerned with American consumer response to coronavirus. Toyota Kirkland employee tested positive, and this Toyota was only two miles away from when the first 10 coronavirus deaths happened. This has resulted in fears of all dealerships in the area. For competition, Lexus of Bellevue actually scored 4.7, which is the highest of all the luxury car dealerships in the area. But considering all the other luxury car dealerships in the area scored between 4.0 to 4.5, it means that there's gonna be a lot of competition and it's very hostile. Um, here is a SWOT analysis for our company consisting of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So the strengths of our company is the dealership looks really luxurious, both from inside as well as outside. The weaknesses is service experience and miscommunication. The opportunities 
is expanding our VAP program and the threats are that there are cheaper out of shops or a Lexus of Seattle. For our insights from the company, the top left corner, as you can see, is the negative feedback and reviews that BirdEye has provided us. BirdEye is a website that, uh, that contains all the reviews from different other websites and just contains it in one. It also has links as in like good uh, experience, bad experience. Um, some of the problems uh, comes up second in the word cloud and the word bad is in front of experience 19.8% of the time. Another problem is if you type in Lexus VIP on Google, this video will pop up. And as you can tell already, this video is on YouTube 2016. If you guys haven't known, it's 2020. Uh, no mentions on the website. Some of the courtesy service doesn't really break the script. And what I mean by that is uh, it's kind of like a generic customer service, just like vibe. Like you already know what to expect and there's nothing out of the ordinary. All right. So our goals for our company is we want to create a customer base consisting of private and professional clients and keeping the knowledge up to date. Uh, we want to solve any problem that arises through the field. All our customers, we want to give them the best customer service and long lasting customer service and increase revenue from fixed off to offset declining revenue from a new car sales from the coronavirus economic downfall. <laughs> the Lexus and Bavia always tries to enhance the experience of our customers. Thus, we came up with goals that Mark discussed earlier, and now we are moving slowly towards strategies and tactics. So the first strategy is make service guests feel that there is more value in what they are paying for. In order to achieve that, we would do different tactics. So the first one is before doing any service, our technicians would discuss services needed for the car and costs associated with this. So the second one is after repairs are done, a reader friendly document of what has been done with pictures included will be provided to customers. Repair orders are hard to understand, thus providing more information about it with explanation is going to be very helpful for our customers and will decrease level of misunderstanding. And the third tactic is tour guides are hired to take groups into the shop to show what happens behind the scenes. You're going to have kid-friendly explanation of what is going on. The second strategy, what we're going to have is create more exceptional service and enhance the existing VIP program. So the first tactic is for VIP who spent over 500 that day, we would offer a free food massage right in the dealership. We're going to have a separate room with beautiful flowers, with beautiful smells. They're going to relax on a very nice, comfortable chair and enjoy their time while they're waiting for their car service to be done. The tactic number two is on the VIP's birthday, we would mail a small box of clean products that will keep their car looking pristine and a bottle of wine that will keep their evenings cozier. And tactics number three, we would offer an exclusive VIP lunch zone for waiters. Customers will be delighted with complimentary Wi-Fi, a small bar, drinks, and meals. Thank you so much, Veronica, of for course. great customer service. Yes, and of course, on Fridays for our exclusively amazing clients, you're gonna have piano. Okay. And finally, let's finish with metrics. How do we really know that our strategies are being successful? Well, here's how we know. The first way that we can measure success is seeing an increase in the number of service customers that are added to dealer socket each month. So for those of you that don't know, Dealer Socket is our CRM. Um, it's similar to Salesforce, just better tuned for the dealership uh, model. And so if we see that the number of service customers are increasing uh, month by month, we can see that our unique new visitors um, are increasing as well. So the next way we can measure our success is seeing an increase in the number of ROs per customer in dealer socket. So on each customer profile in our CRM dealer socket, you can see how many ROs or repair orders each customer has. That repair order basically tells you how many times that customer has taken their car in for service. So if we can 
increase these numbers for all customers, we'd know that we're having more customers come in to service their cars at our dealership more often. The third way is um, seeing an increase in the keyword VIP in BirdEye. So if you remember BirdEye, that's the program that we use to have some control over our reviews as well as um, analysis and social listening. So if we type in VIP, BirdEye will sort the connotation and how often it pops up and whether people are aware of it, if they think positively of it, negatively of it. And so that will give us the understanding if that um, strategy has been successful or not. And finally, um, an increase in overall review rating. So, I mean, this one's pretty clear. If you see that our overall score goes up, then clearly customers are being um, more pleased with their experiences at Lexus of Bellevue. Thank you.